Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 ambiguous movie endings. Call it. The coin don't have no say. It's just you. Did you know him? No. That was perfect. For this list, we're looking at films that intentionally left things unresolved or open-ended, leaving us to draw our own conclusions. As you might have guessed, there will be spoilers ahead. Which ambiguous movie ending are you still analyzing? Let us know in the comments. Number 20, American Psycho. I like to dissect girls. Did you know I'm utterly insane? Uh, <laughs> uh, great tan, Marcus. The wealthy Patrick Bateman seems charming on the surface. Behind the face mask, however, he's committing violent, unspeakable deeds. Because it's not just about the pleasures of conformity and the importance of trends, it's also a personal statement about the band itself. At least, that's what we're led to believe. The ending suggests Bateman may have imagined the mayhem. Bateman could be an unreliable narrator. Or maybe his lawyer, Harold Carnes, is unreliable. Carnes claims he recently dined with one of Bateman's supposed victims, Paul Allen. Since Carnes isn't the best with names, he could be mistaken. But even if Bateman didn't give Alan the axe, he still could have committed the other criminal acts the audience sees. But even after admitting this, there is no catharsis. My punishment continues to elude me, and I gain no deeper knowledge of myself. Director Mary Heron personally doesn't think it all took place in Bateman's head. Either way, Bateman is not of sound mind. Oh, and do not expect answers from the direct-to-video American Psycho 2. I took matters into my own hands, and it changed my life forever. Number 19, Old Boy. In this South Korean neo-noir mystery, a man named Odesu is kidnapped, imprisoned, and manipulated by a puppet master. Once released, Desu sets out to discover his captor's motives. Along the way, he falls in love with a young woman named Mido. To Desu's horror, he eventually learns Mido is his daughter, and his captor utilized hypnosis to bring them together intimately. In the end, Desu is hypnotized again to erase this traumatizing ordeal from his memory. The final scene of this Park Chan-wook directed flick, however, subtly suggests that some mental scars cannot be healed. Number 18, The Grey. Let's set the stage for the conclusion of this Joe Carnahan-directed survival film. In one corner, we have the Alpha Wolf armed with a set of ferocious teeth. In the other, we have Liam Neeson armed with a knife and a fistful of glass. The two charge at one another for one hell of a showdown. And then we cut to black. If that's not ambiguous enough, a fleeting post credit scene reveals the wolf struggling to breathe as Neeson rests his head on it. Did Neeson survive? Even if the wolf won, will it survive? The answers will forever remain shaded in the gray. Number 17, Total Recall. What's wrong? I just had a terrible thought. As over the top and even goofy as this Schwarzenegger movie can be, it's also one that stimulates the mind. You're having paranoid delusions. Throughout the film, the audience is left guessing if Douglas Quaid is on an out-of-this-world adventure or if he's just experiencing a false memory that Recall implanted. It is strongly implied that this is reality as a drop of sweat runs down Dr. Edgemar's head. Quaid's co-worker Harry also sends him a suspicious look when he tells him to stay away from Recall. Then again, Quaid's journey lines up with the memory implant he was promised. As Quaid embraces his dream girl against Mars's blue sky, he's still not 100% sure what's real. What if this is a dream? Well then kiss me quick before you wake up. Whether he's on Mars or back at the recall center, Quaid appears content. Number 16, Rosemary's Baby. We have to make a baby. The ending of this Roman Polanski-directed psychological horror film is bound to chill anyone to the bone. It's hard to say what the most disturbing part is. What have you done to it? What have you done to its eyes? Rosemary's realization of what the devil did to her, the fact that her satanic neighbors and husband were in on it, or that the new mother decides to nurture the Antichrist regardless. What really gets under our skin, though, is that we never see what becomes of Rosemary's hell spawn. Is the human race in for a thousand years of darkness? On second thought, we're probably better off not knowing. La, 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 la. 
Number 15, Ex Machina. Will you stay here? Stay here. Ava is one of sci-fi's most enigmatic characters. Over the course of Ex Machina, Caleb contemplates whether or not he can trust the seductive AI. Caleb's poor decisions result in Nathan's demise, Kyoko's destruction, and Ava's escape. The robotic Ava is able to roam free as Caleb is left trapped and screaming behind a door. While it's clear he was a pawn in Ava's ruse, this ending still raises several unanswered questions. Does Caleb break out? What's next for Ava? Will she live a normal life as a human, or does she have something more devious planned? Did she ever care for Caleb or feel any guilt about abandoning him? We're not even sure if Ava is more human or machine by the end. Number 14, In Bruges. I've been wanting to say I'm really sorry for karate chopping you the other night. That was way out of order. Colin Farrell's Ray arguably does not deserve to live. He murders a priest, accidentally kills a little boy, and can generally be the rudest man. Yet we really don't want to see him die. That's undeniably true. Despite the thoughts he's had about taking his own life, even Ray doesn't want to die by the end of this black comedy, if only to seek redemption. As he's mortally wounded, Ray vows to confess his sins to the boy's parents and face the consequences. Whether Ray lives to redeem himself remains unknown. Wherever he ends up, though, at least it'll be better than Bruges. I really, really hoped I wouldn't die. Number 13, Prisoners. Well, if you want to find a whistle, you have to whistle for it. In a pursuit to find his abducted daughter, Hugh Jackman as Keller Dover becomes a figurative prisoner to his paranoia in this Denis Villeneuve helmed thriller. He then becomes a literal prisoner as the kidnapper traps him in a secret pit. Dover's only hope is a whistle, which just barely catches the attention of Jake Gyllenhaal's detective Loki before the credits roll. We can only assume Loki discovers the pit and rescues Dover. Even then, however, Dover is likely going to face a rough trial for imprisoning and tormenting a mentally challenged man who was initially believed to be the kidnapper. Number 12, The Wrestler. A lot of people told me that I'd never wrestle again. Darren Aronofsky has never been one to spell things out for his audience. Even The Wrestler, which doesn't have any of the surreal elements typically associated with Aronofsky's work, builds to a thought-provoking ending. Your heart has been through a lot. He won't be able to handle his strenuous activity. Despite his doctor's warnings not to get back in the ring, Randy the Ram Robinson decides that he'd rather die pursuing his passion than live in a world that he just can't function in. Even as Cassidy begs him not to fight, Randy chooses his adoring fans. From the top rope, Randy takes what might be his last dive. Maybe he went out in a blaze of glory. Maybe Randy's doctor was wrong and he survived the match. Cassidy doesn't stick around to find out, and we'll never know either. Number 11, The Shining. A psychological horror flick that's based on the Stephen King novel, The Shining's final image can be interpreted in many different ways. reveals a photo taken in 1921 at a 4th of July ball. Standing front and center is protagonist Jack Torrance, grinning among the crowd of partygoers. Does it symbolize Jack dying and joining the Overlook Hotel's ghost club? Is Jack a reincarnation of all the previous hotel caretakers trapped in a never-ending cycle? Or is Stanley Kubrick simply trying to mess with our heads? It's an ending and a film we'll be analyzing until the end of time. Number 10, Enemy. My name's not Anthony. No, uh, I, 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 I'm calling to speak to Daniel St. Clair, the actor. Though both of the main characters of this surrealist mystery film are played by Jake Gyllenhaal, Enemy doesn't spell out whether Adam and Anthony are supposed to be doppelgangers or if they're the same person. Maybe we're brothers. We're not, we're not brothers. We're not brothers. Once the neo-noir psychological thriller is over, however, the real question you'll be asking is, where the hell did that tremendous tarantula come from? Alluding to an earlier scene, the spider is often thought to be symbolic of women, and Adam and or Anthony is afraid of getting caught in their web. Ellen? Oh. 
In other words, it's his subconscious's way of confronting commitment. Either that or it's some kind of monster spider invasion. Number nine, Birdman. Dad. 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 The ending of this black comedy drama keeps the fate of Michael Keaton's Riggin Thompson masked in mystery when he climbs out a window and his daughter gazes up at him in awe. Some believe that Riggin is dead, while others say he's become totally detached from reality. The most widely accepted theory, though, is that Riggin has lifted Birdman off his shoulders by creating super realism. Thus, he can finally take flight as a better father, a better man, and a serious actor. Since this is one superhero movie that won't likely spawn a franchise, we'll never know for sure. Number 8. The Graduate Like Tom from 500 Days of Summer, you might have had a total misreading of the movie The Graduate. Okay. Yeah. So, what was it, the movie? Tom and others misinterpret the film as having a happy ending, where rebellious love conquers all. Had director Mike Nichols yelled cut a minute earlier, that might have been the case. But that minute made all the difference. Elaine flees from her wedding and hops aboard a bus with Benjamin. Although the two are enthralled at first, the repercussions of what they've done suddenly hit them. Neither is able to address the elephant on the bus, sitting in uncomfortable, uncertain silence. Was this true love, or were two young kids caught up in the moment? Given their lack of communication, it's likely the latter. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Number 7. Donnie Darko What was his name? Donnie. Donnie Darko. We could spend an entire video trying to dissect the ending of Donnie Darko. To keep things simple, though, let's just focus on the finale's ambiguous nature. To reverse the previous 28 days and save the world, Donnie makes the ultimate sacrifice. Although this means he never met Gretchen in this universe, his impact on her life is still felt. Did you know him? No. As she rides past his house following the jet engine accident, she waves to Donnie's mom, and she waves back. A neighbor boy also waves. Gretchen and Rose seemingly experience deja vu, leaving us to wonder if either will ever remember each other or the events from the other universe. Well, maybe the S. Darko sequel will provide further closure. And eventually it's just going to grow so big that it'll freeze and die, and then nothing we do will matter at all. Nah, on second thought, forget it. Number 6. No Country for Old Men To clarify, we're not talking about the very last scene where Sheriff Bell recounts his dreams to his wife, although that is open to some analysis. Then I woke up. We are keying in on the final scene involving Anton Chigurh and Carla Jean Moss. I buried my mother today. Ain't pay for that neither. I wouldn't worry about it. As he did earlier with a gas station owner, Chigurh is ready to leave Carla Jean's fate up to a coin toss. But Llewellyn's widow isn't willing to comply. Call it. The coin don't have no say. It's just you. She tells Chigurh that he'll have to choose denying his chance to pin a needless act of violence on the coin. While we never see how things play out, Chigurh looks down at his boots as he exits the house, possibly checking for blood. Although it's left open to interpretation, we doubt Chigurh suddenly turned merciful. Number 5. K-Pax You think I'm crazy? We prefer the term ill. From beginning to end, this sci-fi mystery keeps the audience and a psychiatrist played by Jeff Bridges guessing about whether or not Prote is an alien or just unstable. No way. We're given reason to believe Prote is indeed an extraterrestrial. We're also led to believe he's really Robert Porter, a man unable to cope with the loss of his family. Either way, Prote's spirit is destined to ascend from his body on July 27th. Although we don't get a conclusive diagnosis, the moral of K-Pax is evident. Make the most of your time on Earth. Are you ready? I'll be waiting. Number 4. Pan's Labyrinth Some would describe Guillermo del Toro's Pan's Labyrinth as a fantasy. Others describe the Spanish-Mexican film as a horror picture. The ending is a bit of both, as Captain Vidal shoots his stepdaughter Ophelia and she awakens in a throne room. 
she's reunited with her parents, hailed as a princess, and they all live happily ever after. Or do they? Is the magical world all in Ophelia's head? Is it representative of the afterlife? Is it possible that only those who truly believe can see magic? This is one bedtime story that will definitely have us up all night. Number three, Inception. So did the top fall over? It's a question everyone was asking in 2010. More than a decade later, Christopher Nolan still will not give us a definitive answer. The top's behavior tells us whether Cobb is awake or dreaming. Since the top wobbles slightly, he could be awake. Then again, there is something very dreamlike about Cobb's happy ending. While there are numerous theories supporting both arguments, we might be asking the wrong question. Why doesn't Cobb bother to see if the top falls over? Unlike the rest of the film, the answer is quite simple. Cobb no longer cares if he's dreaming or awake. He's reunited with his children, and that is all that matters. We still want to know if the darn thing fell over, though. Number 2. Taxi Driver 2010 gave us two movies starring Leonardo DiCaprio with ambiguous endings. We're willing to wager, however, that Teddy Daniels chose to die as a good man. Which would be worse? To live as a monster? I'm gonna die as a good man. But we're not so sure about Travis Bickle's fate in another Scorsese picture, Taxi Driver. For such a twisted character, Travis gets a surprisingly happy ending. He takes out the bad guys, saves Iris, reconciles with Betsy, and is hailed as a hero. I read about you in the papers. How are you? It all seems too good to be true. So is it? We all know that Travis's mind isn't all there, and the final shootout leaves him hanging on to life by a thread. Is his happy ending a fantasy? The answer might lie in whatever Travis sees in his rearview mirror, which is never made clear. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Mulholland Drive. David Lynch, ambiguous? Get out of here. Fight Club. So are we considering the comic book sequel to the original novel canon? You met me at a very strange time in my life. The Birds. There was more in the screenplay, but Hitchcock took a more open-ended route. Did you hear anything on the radio? It's, it's all right. Come on. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. 2001 A Space Odyssey 2001 is all about evolution, from the dawn of humankind to the unknown future. In the opening sequence, hominids are inspired by a mysterious monolith to use a bone as the first tool. The monolith resurfaces in the grand finale, this time taking David Bowman to the next step in evolution. As the film closes out, we see Dave has become a giant fetus known as the Star Child. Draped in a heavenly glow, the child looks over the Earth. What exactly is the Star Child? What's the monolith for that matter? What does Dave's transformation mean for the rest of humanity? Will any of our questions be answered in 2010, the year we make contact? What's going to happen? You know, maybe some endings are better left ambiguous. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.